Politics can make for strange bedfellows. Take, for example, the vote this week in the U.S. House on a bill to force the sale of TikTok or the current Chinese owners facing a ban of the app in the U.S. Supporters include President Biden, Florida Republican Marco Rubio, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, current House Speaker Mike Johnson, just to name a few. In total, the House passed that bill 352 to 65. Opponents included Georgia Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene and New York Democrat Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Former President Trump, who in office attempted to block TikTok, also urged opposition to the bill, arguing it could expand the reach of meta properties like Facebook. Now the bill still needs to clear the Senate, and that is not a done deal. No vote is set, and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer was noncommittal in a statement following the House vote. In the meantime, prospective buyers are considering a sale. Former Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says he's putting together investors to potentially purchase TikTok. Washington Republican Kathy McMorris-Rogers helped usher that TikTok bill through the House. She chairs the Energy and Commerce Committee that unanimously advanced the legislation earlier this month. I asked her about the urgency, the constitutional and free speech concerns, and what other social media regulations she'd like to see. The choice would be TikToks. So they could either choose to continue to operate as is under the control of the Chinese Communist Party because they are owned by ByteDance, or they could choose to divest, separate from ByteDance and the Chinese Communist Party and continue to, to operate in the United States of America and in businesses and individual users could continue using the app the way that they always have. Would it have to be an American buyer or could it be a French buyer, a, a, a Japanese buyer? Is there a specific like it has to be American? No, not at all. This bill only applies to applications that are subject to the control of specific adversaries that are listed in the bill. And so we list these foreign adversaries as China, Russia, Iran and North Korea. I saw in sort of one of the headlines that the, the former Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin has said that he's trying to put together maybe a group of investors that that would be fine by you. Yes. So what this legislation does, um, this bill is about banning foreign adversaries, as I just said. Mm -hmm. So it's about banning foreign adversaries like China, Iran, Russia or North Korea from collecting massive amounts of data through mm -hmm. these apps. So targeting, surveilling, manipulating American people through apps such as TikTok. And uh, we have concerns about TikTok being owned by ByteDance that is controlled by the CCP. So if this bill were to pass, TikTok would have to make this choice. And yes, uh, it could be open to Steven Mnuchin or other buyers Anybody, in the United yeah. States of America. They yeah. could decide to take the company public. There would be a whole host of options. And obviously, TikTok is very valuable. And I believe that there will be uh, a number of uh, people and entities that would be interested in purchasing TikTok. Let me ask about those security concerns, because TikTok and ByteDance have said that they do not have this coordination with the CCP, that the government in China does not have the kind of access to this data that, that you guys fear. Do you have evidence that they're lying about that? TikTok has repeatedly been caught in this lie that it doesn't answer to the uh, Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, through ByteDance. We know that TikTok has been used to spy on American journalists. And we know that TikTok has been used to surveil American user data. Even uh, last week when we were voting on the bill in committee, uh, that morning, the 177 million users in America on TikTok did not have access to the app that morning until they actually called their representative and voiced their opposition to this bill. So TikTok had blocked their access to the app. And that's just that's just one example where they have the potential to manipulate people for their own gain. Uh, and even internal TikTok employee recordings have revealed, you know, we have quotes where they've said everything is seen in China. And we know that we cannot trust China mm -hmm. to to uh, safeguard our data, uphold American values of freedom. We know that China surveils on its own citizens uh, and we cannot we cannot uh, allow this tool of the Chinese Communist Party to be used to to target, to surveil 
to manipulate American people through an app like TikTok. I'm curious about the content side, too, because I know that there have been concerns expressed by some that, you know, TikTok is a platform that can spread misinformation, disinformation, especially worrisome, I know, in election years. Is that a part of the calculus? You seem to be talking more sort of concerned about what China has access to, maybe not so much the output. Am I reading that kind of right? Yeah, this bill is targeting the threat that TikTok poses because uh, the national security threat that TikTok poses because it is owned by ByteDance that is beholden to the Chinese Communist Party and the access of 177 million American users on this app. Uh, it, does, it does not regulate content or get into content at all. How much of this should Congress play a role in? I mean, there's kind of an expectation, I would think, among most tech you know, most people online now that you're kind of giving up a level of privacy, giving up a level of data, right, when you you join these apps. Like, I, I'm a parent. I, I don't have my kid on TikTok because I share some of the concerns you've t- talked about. How come individuals in America, parents, are, aren't capable of making this decision on their own? Well, unfortunately, we do not have a national data privacy security law in place, a standard in place. Uh, I, I, I have been working on that separately. Uh, but companies are collecting enormous amounts of data. Just every right. actionable data point, um, you know, they're they're collecting it from people's location, is who they're connecting to, other forms of sensitive information. I believe that we need a national data privacy security law in place to protect Americans online and, and especially our children online that are being targeted today. And that's a separate legislation that we're working on in Congress. This bill is really unique and targeted towards the threat that having a company like TikTok that is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party having access to all of this information and all this personal data of Americans uh, because the algorithms are hidden to us. Uh, We know that they are manipulating this data and it is especially concerning. We have grave concerns about uh, TikTok being owned by a foreign adversary that is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, having this access and what that means to our national security. We've been briefed by our national intelligence uh, agencies. Those are on the front lines and they have impressed upon us that this is a very real threat. The other question that I had, and I'm sure you saw it, I think it was a day or two before the vote, former President Trump came out. He he opposed this bill. He said that he worries that it's going to enhance the, the reach of Meta, of Facebook, of Instagram. Uh, he's very critical, obviously, of the ownership of, of Mark Zuckerberg. Um, have you spoken to him? Were you surprised by, by that response? And what is your answer to that type of criticism that you know, this is only going to to create a bigger problem, you know, with another social media company. President Trump did not say that he opposes what we're doing. Rather, he did express the concerns with big tech at large. Mm -hmm. And I completely share those concerns. And that's where I'm committed to continuing to work to rein in big tech. Uh, What this bill does is really finish some work that former President Trump started four years ago when he was as president working and seeking to force TikTok to divest, to separate from the Chinese Communist Party via its ownership by ByteDance. Uh, and that is that is what we are attempting to um, make sure happens with this very narrow, specific bill. When you look kind of broadly at social media, um... I know you're you're a mother. Uh, you know, I don't know if your kids are old enough to be on, on all of the social media. I My son's about to turn 11, so we're kind of entering that world, and I'm learning a lot more about it, frankly, than I think I knew a couple of months ago. But listen, I, there are concerns, right, about the, the impact that has on mental health, the impact that it has on self-worth, certainly the, the spread of, of maybe dangerous information. Um, you know, where should Congress kind of begin and end in, in trying to regulate this this field, whether it's TikTok or a company that's U.S. based like like Meta or or X? Well, let me start with TikTok and the bill that passed the House and just make very clear that TikTok is different because it is owned by a foreign. Oh, yeah, certainly. Yeah. So from a data collection point, I see how they're different. But I guess I'm talking more about like the other concerns that we hear about social media, because I know all of these are issues that kind of fall within your jurisdiction in the uh, ENC committee. 
Yeah, so that that bill is very targeted specific yeah. to foreign adversaries. Um, separately, we have been uh, working on legislation that would would bring in a national data privacy security law into place and would protect Americans online, our children online. It would uh, prohibit the targeting of our children. Uh, that's as, as uh, and and what that legislation does is it limits how much data can be collected to begin with. It gives individuals a right to know what their profile is. It would prohibit the targeting, the collection of you know your location data, your search. Mm-hmm. Uh, history, all of, you know, right now there's just limited amounts of data okay. that's being collected and, yeah. and then how that can be sold. So what the legislation does is put some protections into place for the individual so that if your data, first of all, you know what the profile is. And then if your data is being sold, if it's being um, transferred, if it's being transferred to other countries, that you would yeah. have to be notified that you would. And if, and if, a, if an entity, if a business is collecting more, you know, data beyond what they actually need for that a specific purpose, uh, then you would have to give permission for them to collect data beyond what they actually need for their business purpose or the relationship that you have with this entity. I think that's a, a an interesting component to this because, you know, especially as it kind of relates to, to these adversarial countries that you point out in this bill, Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, like they can kind of get at this data through other means, right? I mean, there there are like these data brokers and, and things like that. So that's got to be sort of part of of sort of the broader issue you're talking about. Yes, uh, in fact, we we did the Energy and Commerce Committee also has passed out mm-hmm. uh, unanimously a <laughs> bill that would prohibit data brokers from yeah. selling our personal data to these foreign adversaries, and that bill will be voted on this week or this uh, this next week in the House of Representatives. On this issue, I'll finish with the Senate. Do you think they're going to take this up? I, I, I think that there was some, were you surprised at it kind of the, the non-committal response we've seen this far from the U.S. Senate on this bill? Are you in conversations with Chuck Schumer and, and others over on the uh, other side of uh, the Capitol building? Uh, yes, actually, um, immediately after the bill passed, the, um, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee yeah. said, Mark Warner and Senator Marco Rubio, Rubio uh, issued a statement in support. Uh, there's other senators that are also um, voicing support for the bill and for us taking action. There have been some other bills that have been introduced in the Senate to address apps like uh, like TikTok, uh, but we are in active negotiations, and I'm hopeful that the Senate will take action very soon on, on this bill. I wanted to finish with this, if I may, only because I, I know you have announced that you're not running for re-election um, after uh, quite a while in, in the House. And I'm just curious, there seems to be kind of a trend of that, right? A lot of your colleagues that have been sort of veteran lawmakers are, are deciding to retire, do something else. Um, what's behind that? I mean, is it just kind of time that to pass the torch or is Congress not as much fun maybe as it used to be? <laughs> well, it's a lot of fun when you're chairing uh, a committee. You know, I can tell you it's been uh, great fun and uh, s- such an honor to chair the Energy and Commerce Committee to be able to lead on important legislation like we've been discussing today, mm-hmm. continuing to work on privacy legislation. Uh, uh, another priority of mine has been price transparency and health care, which we also are working on. Um, for me, it was it really was uh, time. It's time to go home. I do have young kids. I have Three young kids, 16, 13, and 10, and just uh, feeling like, you know what, it's time to pass the the torch to the next person. It's been an honor and privilege to serve, and I do believe in this institution deeply. It's an amazing institution, the House of Representatives and Congress, and such an honor to serve. And there's going to be, there's a lot of people, uh, I think there's 10 that have already announced that they've, right. uh, they would like to have consideration to uh, take my place in the House. Well, I appreciate uh, you taking this time and explaining this bill. Listen, there's a lot of attention on this and and a lot of people have questions. So I appreciate you answering ours and uh, always appreciate the time you've given us over the, the last several years as well, Congresswoman. Thank you very much. Good to be with you. Thank you.